I consider myself a man of decent logic. A man who has a fairly firm grasp on the perceptions of reality. A man who's down to earth and lives in the realms of the real world. Until today, when that reality was challenged by a blue tainted hedgehog and his flying fox with two tails. This is the gateway to madness that the world of children's programming has chosen to call the adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. Imagine coming across a mentally disabled person who's not only criminally insane, but was also drunk, high, and had a whole frontal lobotomy leaving little to no intelligence left in his brain. He would be normal compared to the adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. So, what's wrong with this show? What's right with this show? That's the shorter answer! It's actually hard to come up with words to describe how batshit crazy this show is. It is that crazy. So, rather than talk about it, let's go ahead and try and watch it. The key word being try. So here's the opening of the show, which I suppose is supposed to sum up what the show is about. Look, it's Sonic! Sonic! We got a lot of Sonic! Hello! Hello, Sonic! Sonic! Hey, lots of Sonic! Lots of Sonic! Hey, Sonic! Sonic! Definitely a lot of Sonic! Sonic! Well, that explained everything. So the show takes place in Who Gives a Shit Land. I call it that because clearly you look at the backgrounds knowing the creators just threw up their arms and shouted, Really? Who Gives a Shit? Civilization. Boy, I thought we'd never find it. Civilization? Where? What, you mean those couple of building blocks in the distance? That's supposed to be a city? Oh yeah, one of the great architectural designs of cinema. Gotham City, the Castle of Gondor, shitty ass bricks. I can't wait to see more. Now I know what you might be thinking. Are you just showing the opening of this show again? Nope. This is literally all the show is, just chasing and yelling. It's like a cartoon for kids that have Tourette's Syndrome. So the show stars Sonic, duh, fresh from his hit video game off the Sega Genesis. He's voiced by none other than Jalel White. That's right, Urkel from Family Matters. I see you! Oh yeah, cause Urkel's voice was such a delight to listen to, wasn't it? All I care about in this park is the safety of the kids. I shall be forced to verbally castigate you in front of your peers. He's accompanied by his sidekick Tails, a little fox who can fly around because he was born with two tails. Makes sense to me. They're out to stop the evil Robotnik, who seems to live in a house designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. His evil plan is to, you guessed it, take over the world. No, I'm not gonna do it. I'm sick of that joke. You know, it was funny at first, but now it's just getting annoying. So you are never gonna hear that joke again. Of course! Of course! <laughs> it's gonna take more than that this time. Of course! Fucking joke. So Robotnik isn't really as much a dictator as much as a comic foil for Sonic to make fun of. But what do you expect when you dress like Santa Claus's sadomasochistic gimp brother? One troublemaking teenager has made me tear every hair from my beautiful head! Wow, he hates him so much that he actually tattooed the word hate right on his very teeth. That's a lot of hate. He tries to stop him by building robots that are designed to kill and destroy. These machines are so lame, I doubt they make it as half-baked Mega Man villains. Two of the robots created are a robotic chicken named Scratch and... whatever the hell this is, named Grounder. And if you thought Sonic's voice was annoying, just listen to this ear sodomy. Hey, Pastra! You miss! Ha ha ha! I'll glue your yak shut! Uh. How do I describe the voices of these two? You ever tell your side of a story where you're trying to make the other person you're talking about sound really obnoxious? So I'm sitting there just talking to my friends when suddenly the teacher walks in and is like, What are you doing here? Aren't you supposed to be in class? He made me persistent. He made you too dumb to quit. And then my idiot friend is like, Duh, I don't know. I thought it started later. Yeah, the chase is over. Yeah, you make them sound annoying for a reason. They annoy you! There's also a monkey named Coconuts who wants to capture Sonic on his own, often declaring war on the speedy little hedgehog. I declare open season on hedgehogs! I don't know why, but this vengeful war-hungry monkey always reminded me of George W. Bush. Maybe it's the cowboy hat, I don't know. You can run, but you can't hide, hedgehog! He's got weapons of mass acceleration. 
The way Sonic always gets out of their traps is by running, of course, and putting on several disguises, as the bad guys never seem to realize there's a lot of blue, overdressed hedgehogs in the neighborhood recently. Don't crowd, don't push! Admission is free! <sighs> well, that came out of nowhere! I love how he actually winks to the audience to point out that it's him under that costume. Because he's such a master of disguise that we really needed the extra hit. I'm over there. How does that work? I don't care how stupid you are. If you just say I'm over there, nobody's gonna go, oh, he's over there. Even the mentally ill aren't that stupid. Look at this animation, by the way. There is no thought, focus, or structure put into any of it. This is an animation. It's fucking doodling. I don't want to watch something that's less entertaining than what I drew on my desk in high school. Guess you guys won't be staying for a second show! You got that right. So the whole show pretty much is just the evil robots trying to set up traps to catch Sonic and how the traps always seem to backfire. Gee, does that sound familiar at all? Unlike the Roadrunner though, this show has the misfortune of having people speak. Obviously a very big mistake. Oh, here comes the hedgehog! Get ready to nab him! I thought you had him! I thought you had him! Oh god, Tom and Jerry had a plot compared to this! As you probably gather, this show has absolutely no basis in logic or reason. But there are just really some things that go beyond the boundaries of comprehension. Like watch this scene as they try to set up yet another trap. drug-induced land you're in, you cannot blow in your hand and come up with a pumpkin. How did you even come to that conclusion? I mean, what's next? He's gonna blow in his hand and a beautiful woman's gonna come out? How can you blow into your hand and make a woman? Why would you even be chasing hedgehogs if you can blow into your hand and make a woman? It does not add up. My god, how do you even advertise a show like this? I mean, what did the commercials look like? Hey kids, Ren and Stimpy making too much sense for you? Then put on the adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. You'll love this cosmic out-of-body raping of your senses. It's like a Japanese show in English, only you still have no idea what's going on. You must be at least this high to watch. One of the running jokes, I guess, is that Sonic always has a thing for chili dogs. A long way from the nearest chili dog stand. Two chili dogs to go. Can we find some more chili dogs? Two dozen chili dogs. You punched your last chili dog. Buy chili dogs from that guy. You know, at least with other cartoons, there's some sort of rhyme or reason. Bugs Bunny with carrots, Winnie the Pooh and honey, a blue hedgehog, and chili dogs? What's the connection? My guess is it's what gives him his supersonic speed. That's to say, I'm sure he's fast on his feet, but nothing can breathe fire like a gas-producing bean product that makes you want to shit more than a Metamucil cocktail. Gotta roll, troll! Even in the realm of its own insanity, it doesn't make any sense. Like, look at this scene where they're trapped in a cage as a trap door is slowly opening up. Duh! First of all, Tails can fly! Why doesn't he just pick up Sonic and lift him off the ground? Second, are you seriously telling me that you can't fit through those bars? You can drive a fucking pickup truck through those giant gaps! Don't you realize the terrible villain is about to destroy this entire place? Nope! Don't say no, never mind, your current events! Maybe you should consider a career in politics. Oh, come on! I've seen Fruity Pebble commercials funnier than this! This is torture! This is madness! This is Sonic! <laughs> and just when you think you've seen the lamest part of the show, Sonic actually has a moral to teach at the end. Because I really want a blue hedgehog who eats chili dogs to be my children's teacher. We're surrounded, Sonic! Call 911! No way, Tails! This is nothing! 911 is for real emergency! That's right, kids! Don't call 911 for being attacked by people who want to kill or kidnap you! Only call for important things! Like if the cable goes out, and you can't watch the adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog! That's why it's important! But even the messages are weird. I mean, there's the usual stuff like learn to share and eat your veggies, but some days are just strange. Believe it or not, every year some ignorant kid takes a ride in a clothes dryer just like this one. If you think it's smart to climb in a dryer, you're really all wet. Really? Kids climbing in the dryers is such a national problem they have to devote the entire end of an episode to that? You know what? 
intelligence of the people who watch this show, this is probably a good thing to teach. Because my guess is, when they're not trying to operate heavy machinery with their butt cheeks, they're probably trying to do something stupid like this! I mean, what else could you possibly teach that would be as stupid as that? Even you can learn something from a sloth. Fuck this show! Fuck this show! Fuck this show! Now, if you can believe it, there was actually another show about Sonic that came out the exact same time. They even got the same actor, Jaleel White, to play the lead. Because one Sonic show wasn't enough to piss us off, I guess. The show was called Sonic the Hedgehog, but later got the name Sonic Set AM. Why? Because it came on Saturday mornings, I guess. Now, isn't that kind of stupid? Isn't that like calling the title of a show Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Easter Standard Time? Look, I know it's customary to release a show after some time has gone by, but within the same fucking year? That's as crazy as the rest of the bullshit I had to put up with today! Well, forget it! I give up! I don't even want to think about the idea of this show procreating! There is no way in hell that any show connected to this character can possibly be good! I am done, done, done! I mean, talk about the complete opposite. This show takes a relatively bright, plotless video game story and turns into a dark, edgy, and actually kind of epic show. Its setting was stylish, its plotlines developed, its characters surprisingly complex. But surely you can't take something as silly looking as Robotnik and make him the least bit intimidating. Jesus! Man, even Robotnik is cool. In fact, he may be one of the coolest villains ever. Just listen to that kick-ass voice. Oh, that's good. That's very good indeed. It's like he's orgasming on every word he says. A very nice touch. Well, well, well. This is good. Oh, that's good. That's very good. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Lower? 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 Oh, that's just delicious. It warms the cockles of my heart. Okay, the less I know about your cockles, the better. Still, this was a pretty nasty bad guy. Certainly a lot different from that other show. The story is actually inventive too. Unlike the other show where Robotnik's trying to take over the world, in this show, he pretty much already has. Everything is roboticized. The city, the animals, everything. And it's just Sonic and a secret group of freedom fighters who try to stop this industrial takeover and bring the green back to the forest. Wait, 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 wait. I can't comprehend this. An environmental message that's... Subtle? Yes, apparently there is subtlety in this Sonic cartoon, unlike... <sighs> that other show! Sonic's not alone in his battle, though. He has a team of animals that are kind of like the Care Bears, Ewoks, and Smurfs all rolled into one. If you gave them weapons. You got Tails, of course, but thankfully he's kind of downplayed. The other characters are Antoine, a cowardly Frenchman. I am hating to be such a, um, what you say, such a worry one. But this terrible place is not so good for our health. We go home, yes? In fact, why do we just surrender? Because that's all we French know how to do, right? Surrender, make love, and be unbelievably snooty. Now where's my French beret, accordion, twirly mustache, and striped shirt? Uh, Jerry Lewis. A half-animal, half-machine named Bunny Rabot. Yeah, I know, I hate the pun too. And the big ugly old wolf says, The better to see y'all with my deer. That wolf is nasty, huh, Bunny? Nasty as a one-eyed snake, sugar. I wish I had a one-eyed snake come after me. Too bad my vagina eats people. What with it being roboticized and all. And last but not least, Princess Sally. The face that launched a thousand furries. What's a furry, you may ask? Um, long, touchy story. Let's just say in my Space Jam review when I said there weren't people out there who wanted to fuck bunnies, I was wrong. Oh, okay, that's a harsh generalization. But from what I can tell, it's people who are fascinated by half-animal, half-human creatures. But for some reason, centaurs are never on there. What's up with that? 
What do you got against the centaurs, huh? Are you anti centites Huh? Huh? I don't know. But either way, I found out this character has kind of a cult following. But here's my question. If she's a princess, where's the king? They talk about him sometimes, but they mostly hint at the fact that he's probably dead. So shouldn't she be in charge now? I know he's alive. I just don't know where. You're not really a princess. You just took the title because it sounds cute. Take some authority! You're a queen! Queen it up, bitch! They don't all have to look like Elizabeth II. You can still be pretty. But start moving forward and take some responsibility. The furries will respect you for it. This is a really cool looking world too. It's very gritty and harsh, with more threatening robotic minions, unlike <sighs> that other show! In fact, these settings are so detailed, I keep thinking they stumbled onto a Star Wars movie half the time. The Force is with you, but you are not a Jedi yet. But perhaps the biggest upset for most people is the last episode. Not because it was so bad, but because it was too good. Robotnik creates a doomsday device, half the Freedom Fighters are captured, Sonic and Sally discover some sort of ultimate power. They destroy the device, wipe out the city, Robotnik retreats forever, his wormy sidekick escapes in a pod, Sonic and Sally confess their love for each other, and they all live happily ever after. Or do they? <laughs> well, don't celebrate too soon, Hedgehog. Now, it's my turn. spin-offs never learn. Leaving us on a cliffhanger doesn't guarantee a sequel. It just pisses us off. And even if you do have a sequel, it doesn't always mean it's gonna be good. Just be self-contained. Oh well. That being said, this really was a great show. In fact, it's actually better than I remember it. Maybe I should have put it somewhere on the top 11 anime and nostalgic TV shows. Just consider it a number 12 spot, I guess. It literally took nothing and turned it into something. Unlike... <sighs> that other fucking show! They took nothing and turned it into even less than nothing! In fact, you know what it's like? It's like two students who turn in two separate projects for a class. Hey there, Teach. Here's my project. Uh, I tried to add as much character and psychological development as possible, given the guidelines, but I think I came up with a pro-environmental show that will actually make kids enjoy the forest without, you know, shoving it in their faces. Well, this is very well put together. Strong story, good character, working beyond the material given to you. A+. plus. Now where's my other student, fuck up McDumbass? Hey, teacher, here's my project, and it's awesome! Uh, it's got a lot of uh, running, uh, a lot of uh, chili dogs, <laughs> uh, it's got a monkey and a chicken, and they just yell all the time, they're like, blah, 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 it's totally awesome. McDumbass, did you put any effort into this? No, I just got high. I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy, remember it, so you don't have to.